Learning about arrays opens a new topic for us, and that is the issue of mutability. All of the types we've learned about previously were immutable. In fact, the array is the only type that we know of uh, that we can mutate the value of the object. And to understand this, it helps if we talk again about the memory model of declaring variables and actually look at what it means for something to be mutable. So when we declare a variable, say if I said a equals 5, well, you might recall that the model for this is that we have some value a and that a refers to an object that has the value 5. And we would generally connect these up like so. We said the difference between a val and a var is whether or not you can change this arrow. So if it's a val, you can't change the arrow. If it's a var, you could. But the object here is immutable, meaning that I can never change the value that's inside of this box. What I can do is I can make it point to a different box, but I can't change this box here. And that's true whether we're talking about ints, doubles, strings. That's kind of the image that should be inside of your head. It's also true for lists. But it's not true for arrays. So what happens with arrays? So if I declare an array with 10 values in it, the picture that you have in your head is something like this. So we'll call our array ARR. And I make it refer to an array with 10 values in it. Now, in, in reality, these values can't be kind of blank. They're going to have something in them. OK, so there is an array with 10 different values in it. And when we do a line of code that does an assignment, for example, if I said ARR sub 3 equals uh, 6, well, what does that do? That actually mutates this array, which is different than if this had been a var and we made it point to a different array. We'd actually be moving this arrow. The mutation means that we can actually change the values inside of here. So sub 0, sub 1, sub 2, sub 3 that line actually changes this to a 6, which we can't do with our immutable objects. We can't do it with strings. We can't do it with lists. We can't do it with tuples. For all of those, we have to create completely new objects and refer to the new objects. But in the case of the array, we can mutate the values that are stored inside of the array with lines of code like this. Why does this matter? Well. A big part of why it matters is due to something called aliasing. So if I have a line of code where I say val b equals arr, what would that look like? Well, we would be getting another variable called b, and it would refer to the same object that arr does. Because of that, when we change something through b, so for example, I say b sub 0 equals 9, that will actually change that value there, which means that we're changing the value of arr. This is called aliasing. Uh, just like if a person goes by an alias, that means that they have two different names that they are known by. Here, we have a single object that is known by two different names. We can kind of see this active in code. So I could val arr equals array dot, now let's just make it manually. Something like that. 
val b equals arr b sub zero equals nine. And now we look at arr and sure enough, this array has changed. That's the significance of the mutable objects and of aliasing. And this can lead to confusion, as you might guess, because it doesn't look like I've changed ARR. This line doesn't actually do anything to ARR, but because B is an alias, it does wind up changing it. This is also part of why people typically like to avoid mutable objects. Uh, you know, some people will prefer the list over the array simply because it is immutable, so that you can't have this type of thing creep in. But there are a number of things that we're going to do that benefit from this. And in fact, we'll see how when we pass arrays into functions, we're often looking for this aliasing and the fact that we can mutate those arrays.